Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So in today's video, we'll look into drug distribution. Drug distribution is affected by a wide array of factors such as perfusion or blood flow to the region, capillary permeability, binding of drug to plasma and tissue proteins, the lipophilicity of a drug and then finally the volume of distribution of a drug. Let's discuss each one in detail. Starting with the blood flow, the higher the blood flow, the rapid will be the distribution of the drug. The rate of blood flow to different tissues in the body differs and depends on the vascular supply of that region. The highly perfused and vessel rich organs of the body are the brain, liver and kidneys. However, the less perfused organs of the body are the skin, muscles and adipose tissue. But then this blood flow is not the only factor which we will have in consideration. The next important factor we should look into is the capillary permeability. The capillary networks in the body are not the same. They differ in their structure throughout the body. Well, we all know that capillaries are made of endothelial cells. So in some areas, these endothelial cells form slit junctions, hence exposing the underlying basement membrane and facilitates passage of drugs through these small intercellular spaces. However, in other areas like brain, these cells of the capillaries make tight contact with each other and does not allow exposure of the basement membrane, hence making it difficult for drugs to pass through it unless the drug is lipophilic and uncharged. Looking at the lipophilicity, drugs can be either hydrophilic or lipophilic. Lipophilic drugs can easily cross the phospholipid bilayer of cell membranes through the process of diffusion which we just discussed in our previous video of drug absorption. On the other hand, a hydrophilic drug cannot pass throughout the cell membrane but they can pass through the slit junctions of the endothelial cells. The next factor is binding of drugs to plasma proteins and tissues. A drug can exist in two forms, within the vascular or the tissue compartment. The free form of the drug and the binded form, where the drug binds with the plasma proteins or the body tissues. In the vascular compartment, by which I mean within the blood, the drugs that binds to the plasma protein, that is albumin, mainly acts as a reservoir of the drug and these albumin proteins can then release the drug whenever the concentration of the free drug is reduced by elimination process. Many drugs that can move out of the vascular compartment and can enter the intercellular compartment have the capability to bind with the tissue proteins as well. These drugs can accumulate with the proteins, lipids or nucleic acids of individual cells of the tissues and can act as tissue reservoir of the drug. This accumulation of the drug within the tissue can prolong its actions and may even cause local drug toxicity. The last and the most important factor of all is the volume of distribution of a drug, abbreviated as VD. Volume of drug distribution tells us how extensively the drug is distributed to the rest of the body compared with the plasma. It is calculated by dividing the amount of drug introduced into the body by the plasma concentration in zero time. To understand the drug distribution, it's really important to have some knowledge of the body compartments first. There are three major fluid compartments in the body, listed as the intravascular or the plasma compartment, the interstitial compartment and the intracellular compartment. The intravascular and the interstitial compartments together are considered the extracellular compartment. The intracellular compartment makes two-thirds of the body fluids while together the intravascular and interstitial compartment which makes the extracellular compartment makes one-third of the body fluids. The total body water is the sum of the extracellular and the intracellular water compartments which is about 0.4 liter per kg or 60% of the total body weight. Let's look at how drugs can be distributed throughout all these three compartments. In the plasma compartment, the drug, if it has a high molecular weight or it is highly bound to plasma proteins, it cannot easily pass to other compartments. 
the drug wouldn't be able to pass easily through the slit junctions of endothelial cells of blood vessels, hence the drug becomes trapped within the vascular compartment. As a result, the volume of distribution of such a protein-bound and high molecular weight drug is reduced. If a drug has a low molecular weight, that is a small size drug, and it is a charged and hydrophilic drug, it can easily pass through the slit junctions of the endothelial cells into the interstitial compartment. However, this charged and hydrophilic drug cannot pass the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membranes, hence cannot enter the cellular compartment. As a result, this drug distributes into a volume that is the sum of the plasma volume and the interstitial volume which both makes the extracellular compartment. The volume of distribution will still be reduced as both of the vascular and interstitial compartment makes only one third of the body fluids. If a drug has a small molecular weight and has enough lipophilicity, it can easily pass through the vascular and interstitial compartment into the intercellular compartment by easily passing through the phospholipid bilayer. So the drug will distribute into a volume of about 60% of body weight that is throughout the water weight of an individual or about 42 liter in a 70 kg individual. Hence, we have understood that a large volume of distribution indicates greater distribution into tissues, whereas a smaller volume of distribution suggests confinement of drug to plasma or extracellular compartment. In our next video, we'll look at effects of volume of distribution on a drug's half-life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.